Hey my awesome people, Hamza here and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through on how you can create this single product page for your e-commerce website using Elementor and Elementor Pro. Let's get started. So let's look into how our single product page is going to look like for our Elementor website. First of all, it's going to have a breadcrumb just like this over here, the product image, product title, the product meta, the price, the stock quantity, an add to cart button, a product summary, a slider for the product, and someone can actually view these images in a light box. In fact, you can actually customize your light box settings for Elementor, like I did in this video. You can actually check out that video in the video description of this tutorial. Then we will add the product description. This is the full description. And finally, the related product section. I'm going to take you on how you can customize every bit of this page for your own website. Let's start from the beginning. I don't know by the time you'll be watching this tutorial, Elementor's Flexbox container is still in the beta version. And in this tutorial, I'll be using the Elementor Flexbox. So in case you are watching this video before actually the Flexbox container is out, this is what you have to do. You'll be coming here to Elementor, Settings, come to Experiments, this over here. So make sure that you have it activated and save changes. That will enable you to use the Elementor Flexbox instead of using the Elementor sections and columns. In the previous video, I actually took you through on some of the basic settings you have to do to get started with your e-commerce website. And this included the site settings and also creating your design system for Elementor. And if you haven't watched that video, please go and check it out because some of the things that we did in that video are going to help you and actually fasten the process of creating your single product page and going forward. So to create our single product template, what we need to do is to create a scheme that every product we add on our WooCommerce website will adopt or use that scheme. I hope that actually makes sense because if you have like a thousand products, we are not creating a product page for every product we add, but we just create a single skin and that skin will be used by every other product that we add on our e-commerce website. To do that, we are going to come over here to Elementor templates and come to theme builder. And by the way, to use the Elementor theme builder, you should have Elementor Pro or the Elementor Cloud. And if you don't have Elementor Pro or Elementor Cloud, kindly use my affiliate link right down in the description of this video so that you are able to access the Elementor theme builder, which will enable you to create the headers, footers, single product templates, and a lot more. Right, so once you are here, what you are going to do is come over here to the single product option. You can click on the add or just simply say add new. I'll close over here this pop-up box that shows up. What we are going to do is we're going to add a container. It should be the horizontal container. And inside this container, I'll add another container because I'm going to use two columns. So this container, and I'll duplicate this to have two containers inside this one. And now I'll start by adding the breadcrumbs, uh, WooCommerce breadcrumbs, which is this. I'll add a product image like this over here. So I'll use the image widget. So we have a product image widget, which is this here, but this one is going to show the image thumbnail and all the other images in the image gallery. But that's not what we want because we want that we have this single product image or the featured image of the, or the featured image of the product. And in the next container, we'll add a slider for the other product images. What we are going to do, I'll delete this. Then I'll look up for the image widget. With our image widget, I'll come to the dynamic tags. And then I'm going to look up over here to the WooCommerce options, select the product image option. And here we'll have our product image showing up. I'll select the image size to be full. So I'm going now to add the title of the product. So I'll look up for the title widget or heading widget add it over here. I'll come to the dynamic tags and then look up for the product title, which is here. There we go. We can choose between the HTML tag of H1 or H2, but in this case, we are going to be using H2. That's the size that we want to be using for our product titles. Next will be our product meta. So look up for the product meta, add it here. 
so it will be an inline and will enable a divider i will set the color here to be our main next we're going to be adding our product price but also the stock management or oh, this is a widget that will help us know that will help your visitors know how many of these products are actually in stock so to do that we are going to come over here and then look up for the product price widget then we're going to add another widget called stock or product stock as you can see over here our widgets are running in the vertical direction but we want these two widgets to actually run in the horizontal direction and if we use the inline auto option for positioning for example when i select this widget and i say width inline auto it will not move our other widget to be in line with this widget so what are we going to do in this case i'll set this back to default and i'm going to add a container so container and i'm going to make that this container is actually running in the horizontal or row direction like this then i'll drag my other widgets this widget into this container now we have in this container we have two widgets and now they are running in the row direction as a quick fix that i thought you guys would actually like to see now for the price option it's going to use our title style so i'll select the widget and come over here to style i'll choose the color to be the main and then the typography is going to be our title stroke head and for this widget uh, i would like that this text is somehow in the vertical middle of this text here and if i go to the container and i select the align item center option it actually doesn't give me that option but what i'm going to do in this case i'm going to come over here to the margin options i'll unlink and come to the bottom value and i'll add a 20 but a negative and this somehow makes this to move to be in some sort of uh, on the same axis or aligned to the same axis horizontally and for me this somehow fixes this issue because the other options i looked into are not actually giving me the result that i wanted that said now we're going to add our button look up for add to cut so this is the custom add to cut button so with our button widget selected we want to manage that the quantity here is going to be one and for the button type we are going to leave it on default text is going to be add to cut the icon position will be before and then we'll also be changing our icon here and then look up for the plus icon insert and that's it and under the layout option we'll let that to be inline and remember that we had set up that our buttons on hover it should change the color but it shouldn't have this black border here and also it shouldn't have the rounded border radius i've still failed to fix that in the button options in the design system for some reason i don't know why it doesn't remove the rounded radius even when you set everything to zero but that's a topic for another day so now i am going to do it manually here but this will be applied to every other product that will be added to our e-commerce website so i'm going to come over here on normal i'm going to make sure that we don't have a border radius and now you see it is fixed already but on hover as well we don't want to have a border color so what i'm going to do is just come over here and empty everything so i'll make everything to be transparent and now you see we don't have a border color on hover for some reason if i use the align self option to stretch this button because it should be able to stretch all the way to the other side it is not stretching so i don't know why this is not happening but let me continue in the tutorial and later on i'll come back and have this fixed because what we need is it to look exactly like this over here i'll add the other widgets that we need here on our website we're going to add the product description widget so which is the short description so short description add it to the column here and this should automatically echo up our product description over right here now once that is done we are now going to add another container so but before we go into adding another container let's look into some of the settings that we would like to have on this first container remember that inside the second container we also want to add some padding and that will be 40 pixels padding on the left and with the first container selected i'll unlink all the padding so i'll come over here 
advanced and unlink all the padding we don't need any padding in the second container and with the main container holding these other inner containers and i mean that is this container up here we're going to come to advanced options and at the top we'll give it an 80 pixels padding and at the bottom we give it a 20 pixels padding so when you look over here you realize that there is some space between the two containers but we don't want that space and by default elementor adds 20 pixels between elements and in this case we don't want to have this gap between these two elements so i'll get this container selected come to the layout and over here we are going to choose the gap between elements to be zero for now so far all looks good unless i realize that something is messed up then i'll be coming back to fix that before we actually close up this video so now let's add another container and that's where we are going to be adding our product image slider a container this container will be running in the vertical direction and i'm going to first of all remove all the paddings or the default paddings in this case don't want anything like that and then inside that container we're going to add the image carousel so the image carousel we drag it into our second container and we'll use the dynamic tag over here and link up to our product gallery the image size is going to be full select the image size option to be full the slideshow is going to be only set to two images and then we're going to set the slide to scroll we'll leave this on default and we are going to actually use only arrows and then we are going to link up in the media file and this will enable that our images are going to be opening up in a light box and coming here to the additional options we are leaving everything over here on the default settings uh let's go to the style we are leaving all the styling options on the default settings as well as nothing to change on the advanced side of things as you already see we have a product gallery showing up in an image carousel so or slider on our product page the next option we are going to add here on our product page is our product description so we'll add a container which is running in the vertical direction and inside there we're going to add a divider so we'll look up for our divider widget this over here it will be solid 100 percent and we're going to add an element which is going to be text and that is going to be our product description We'll make it to be an h2 and under style the color is obviously black weight is one and gap will be 15. for the text it will be black and typography will be using our head stroke title and that is going to be position is going to be left hand side and that's all for now for our divider we add our product data tabs then what we're going to do is to style this up a little bit and background color is going to be our secondary color and then typography is basically going to be our body text let's go to the active options text color we want it to be our secondary and background color is going to be our white and for the typography that will keep the same and under the panel option we will add the text color to be our black color so or our main color typography will use our body text and for the heading and typography is going to be our title stroke head just like that over here so we'll now add our container with the related products widget what i'll do is now simply duplicate this container duplicate i'll change this to related products delete this widget and then look up for the related products widget drag it into our container all right so we need to add uh, three products for some reason it's not showing me a preview of those products but it should be doing so the other thing i realized we should actually have a look into is the line height for the text here what i will do now is come back at the site settings fonts and this is going to be the body fonts yeah for me a 27 looks a little bit better so what i'm going to do update I'll exit my site settings and inside the editor what I'm going to do right now because I want us to see the preview of the related products but also come back and work on the responsive settings come and say publish add a condition and this is going to be for all the products so I'll say save and close and I'll open up one of the products let me this exact product product title 
product meta the price uh, the product images in a slider and opening up in a light box product description and related products there is no actually related products for this exact product because we only have one crank set on our website let's have a look at another product that has other related products i will open up like for example the saddle this is how it would look like let's go to the related products option there is how the related product section looks like in this case i'm going to go back and remove this title for the related products and then once we work on the shop archive that will change the design of our related products section for now let's go and remove this related products subtitle so we are going to come to the style option with the related product widget selected come to style scroll way down here and look up for the heading option i will hide the heading reload and now finally you see that we have hidden the title for the related products so with our header selected i'll come to style give it first of all the background color which is supposed to be our white color we are now going to update this and then go back and work on the responsive settings of our product page template simply click over here single product page and that's it once you are done simply update i'll open up another product so for example when i go to the shop page i want to open up for example the lights here we have our lights using our layout that we just created but before we close up the video there's one thing that i had actually left out not intentionally but somehow for some reason i had not mentioned it when you look over here on our single page template there is this gr icon over here so let's add that so select our first container come to style background overlay i'll add a background type and we'll select our icon this insert position is going to be custom i'll set the view width to be 87 no repeat it's going to be a custom size we'll make it 200 pixels in this case and opacity will be 0 0.1 looks good i'll update for now but we also have to make custom changes for the other devices and it's better that you could add additional breakpoints so that you see exactly how on different devices some of these features will look like in the responsive mode you can come over here to the settings and then you can add additional breakpoints like extra mobile extra tablet for laptop and even a white screen because that will give you a better impression of how your icons and other features of your page will look like on different devices there is our single product page and now we can simply hit save changes and update if we go over here to our preview and when you look that now we have this and it will be appearing across all our single product pages like this as well it shows up over there and it should be responsive on all devices all right before we close up our tutorial let's add some styling to our add to cut button so that it looks familiar to this other button from the fact that we are using the flexbox container i expected that if we use the align self option and we stretch this button it should go all the way through to the other side of the container but i don't know why it's not working out that way so i found a fix and in this fix what i simply did was to come over here to the style and then under the padding option i simply unlinked everything right i added 150 bottom i did a 15 and left i added 150 now my other challenge was to make sure that this button looks great on other devices like on the tablet so for the tablet i did 10 and 120 right and 10 bottom and 120 on the left hand side for the mobile the 70 right and the 70 on the left hand side i'm a little bit convinced with this but i would have preferred if the stretch option would actually work in this case so that everything works out of the box what i'll do now is update go to our preview page i'll reload this page so there is our add to cut button when i say add to cut it should give me the option to view the cut which is over right here let me go straight to view the cut and here is our cut page.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope now this gives you an idea on how you can actually develop your single product page using Elementor and Elementor Pro. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to create your product archive just like this over here. And this will apply for your shop page and all other product categories. And this page will actually have a custom filter and also paginations. See you in the next video.